Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of all of my co-authors here, I'd really like to thank the meeting organizers for giving us the opportunity to uh, talk to you a bit about our work on a systematic comparison of models of ART uh, in South Africa. Um, this is work that's been carried out through the HIV Modeling Consortium, which is a uh, project funded by a grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. We'd also like to thank participants of the HIV Modeling Consortium meeting on the potential impact of ART on HIV incidents, hosted by Sisima and Stellenbosch um, last November for feedback on a preliminary version of the study. And I'd also like to thank Britta Jewell for assistance, uh, Britta Jewell at Imperial College for assistance with facilitating the, this study in that meeting. Um, so I don't think it's news to anybody here that there have been uh, several different mathematical models of the impact of ART on HIV incidence uh, in South Africa in particular. We've heard about several of these models already in the first two days of this meeting. And one of the challenges uh, with consuming these models has been trying to, is each of the models has looked at, uh, asked different questions, looked at different outcomes, so actually understanding do the models themselves agree about what the impact of uh, ART would be uh, hasn't been straightforward. So the question that we asked here was when we simulate the same ART or intervention program, then do the models agree about the impact, the epidemiological impact of ART on HIV incidence in South Africa. And so the study we designed to look at this is we used 12 independent mathematical models of the impact of ART on HIV incidence, all calibrated to the South African epidemic setting. Uh, each of the model authors simulated a pre-specified set of standardized ART intervention programs and each of the models reported uh, common metrics of program impact. Uh, in addition, we used the models to estimate the epidemiological impact of the existing ART scale-up in South Africa. And besides the ART intervention program, other aspects of the model structure and parameterization were not standardized. So the question here was really, are the models as they're being used in the wild to answer different policy questions, um, uh, do they agree just when we standardize only the ART program? So this is a list of the 12 models that we used in the study. Uh, there were four individual-based micro-simulation models and eight deterministic differential equation models. Ten of the 12 models explicitly simulated uh, two sexes and heterosexual transmission between these. Um, Six of the models incorporated age structure in some way. Uh, they differed in the ways that they implemented age structure. And uh, eight of the models included heterogeneity and sexual mixing, where some members of the population had a greater propensity for uh, sexual behavior than other members of the population. Uh, the intervention scenarios that we considered um, systematically varied the CD4 count threshold for treatment eligibility. They also varied the percentage of the HIV-infected population with access to treatment, as well as the percentage of those who start treatment who are retained on treatment after three years. Uh, the models also standardized the scale-up of the intervention. Uh, treatment availability was assumed to begin in January of 2012 with an instantaneous program scale-up at that date. Um, and treatment initiation was presumed to begin, uh, or treatment initiation was presumed to occur on average one year after becoming eligible for whatever the relevant CD4 count threshold was. The outcomes that we looked at were the percentage reduction in HIV incidence and the number of person years of ART provided per infection averted. We looked at these outcomes in the years 2020 and 2050, so eight years and 38 years after the uh, beginning of the ART program, and these results are calculated compared to a counterfactual in which there's no ART provided. So the, the results here are not looking at what are the additional benefits of further scale up of ART in South Africa, but rather are comparing the impact of the program, a very stylized intervention program, to what would have occurred with no treatment. And so in a sense, 
the purpose is not to evaluate any specific program in South Africa, but rather to understand the differences between the models. So uh, these figures here just show the baseline um, HIV prevalence and HIV incidence in each of the models in that counterfactual scenario where there is no ART provided. Uh, one thing to point out, one of the models, the STD SIM model, is calibrated to a larger HIV epidemic uh, in the Labisa subdistrict of KwaZulu Natal province. So that's the dash line. Uh, the other 12 models, or sorry, excuse me, the other 11 models are all calibrated to the national HIV epidemic. And so those models generally uh, agree, are fairly consistent about HIV prevalence up to the current date, although there is a substantial variation in the underlying HIV incidence across those models. Uh, now to look at the impact of the, uh, <clears throat> the ART programs. Here we show the results for an intervention scenario where individuals are eligible for ART when their CD4 count falls below 350. 80% of the population has access to ART and retention after three years is 85%. And in the year 2020, eight years after the initiation of the program, the models predicted that incidence would be between 35 and 54% lower than what it would have been without ART. Although in year 2050, the range of results was much larger, uh, the, model, the models range between a 32% and 74% reduction in incidence. Uh, the next outcome that we looked at was the efficiency of ART for prevention in terms of the number of person years of ART per infection averted. And for this result, there was a very wide range of um, estimates across the models. In year 2020, uh, the, the range was from an one infection averted for every six years of ART provided up to an infection averted for every 19 years of treatment provided. And for 2050, the range was even a bit wider from four to 20. So one of the things as we heard about this morning that has been hypothesized to uh, drive the impact of treatment as prevention interventions is the amount of transmission that occurs at different stages of infection, including um, how much transmission occurs during early infection or, um, or acute HIV infection. Uh, and so to look at this, we compared the percentage of transmission that would occur after ART eligibility with the percentage reduction in incidence um, resulting from intervening. Uh, and we actually only found a modest uh, correlation between these two outcomes. Um, so, uh, essentially, the amount of transmission at each stage of infection uh, affected the impact of the intervention a little bit, but it wasn't the only factor that determined uh, the impact of the intervention. And finally, we looked at the impact of the existing ART scale up on South Africa by having each of the models simulate the number of individuals starting treatment in each year in South Africa and comparing the HIV prevalence and incidence uh, in that scenario with what the models uh, projected would have happened without any ART. And in this uh, case, the models estimated that HIV incidence today is between 17 and 32% lower than it would have been had no ART program ever existed in South Africa, although uh, the models uh, suggested that prevalence probably isn't very much different than it would have been in the absence of uh, an ART program. So finally, to conclude, uh, we had a very diverse range. We found a very diverse range of models have been used to look at the question of treatment as prevention in South Africa. And there was general agreement between models about the short-term epidemiological impact of stylized ART intervention scenarios. But there was substantial variation in the model pr projections about long-term epidemiological impact and about the estimates of the efficiency of ART at averting HIV transmissions. Um, the models estimated that the existing scale-up of ART could have reduced HIV incidence by 17% to 32% compared to what it would have been without ART, largely offsetting an increase in prevalence resulting from increased survival. Um, and 
we think that further model standardization and comparison is required to really explain the differences in model predictions, and this is work that will be facilitated by the HIV Modeling Consortium over coming months. Uh, and for anybody that would like more information about this study, a draft uh, version of the manuscript is available on the HIV Modeling Consortium website at the URL listed there below. Uh, and thank you very much.